Good partner sex is really all about sharing sex energy and it's about play. And we're not used to being on equal footing with a partner, particularly a male partner. We want to be given our pleasure. So, Carlin, how do we make that bridge? How do we make it so that we're sharing sex energy? Yeah, we get this all the time because women have these expansive experiences in body sex and they have full body orgasms and they connect to pleasure and they're sharing sex energy with a room of people that they just met and then they go home Mm -hmm. (laughs) and they're with their partner and they fall into the routine of my partner should know what I want, give it to me. Um, They stop masturbating, right? And you want your partner to be the source of your arousal, your partner to have all the skills and then they stop experiencing pleasure. Betty used to always say that sex was adult play. Mm -hmm. So how do we play? We play as equals. We negotiate. We talk about what we want to do. Maybe we share masturbation side by side. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Better understand how we like to get off. I love your analogy of eating a meal together with someone, going out to eat. And you shared a story about how you and Betty would go out to eat and how much fun it is. You know, and I think if we look at that, take that analogy into the bedroom. So so share with us how it goes. Well, you know, Betty loved pleasure. I love pleasure and we love food. Mm-hmm. And we would go out throughout Manhattan to the best restaurants. We were regulars at a steakhouse. We were regulars at a sushi spot. And it was so much fun because we're like, what's on the menu? What's seasonal? And we would talk about what we could share and what we wanted to eat. Mm -hmm. We could do the same thing with sex acts, right? And then when we would order and we'd say, oh, you try it first. Mm, Oh, this is delicious. Oh, I like this better. All right, you can have more of this and I'll take more of that. It was a constant communication and we were enjoying ourselves. And, you know, sometimes I wanted an appetizer and Betty didn't. Mm Mm-hmm. Sometimes one of us wanted dessert and the other didn't. And Betty had dentures. So she was a slower eater. Right, right. (laughs) Right. So what we would do is we'd have two plates and we'd divvy everything up because she'd be like, you're eating too fast. You're going to eat all the mashed potatoes. And that's not fair. So it's such a wonderful analogy because that's how we should feel as comfortable talking to our partners about sexuality and what we can do and what is the play and who wants to do what and what sex toys do we want to bring in. And just because they're done eating, you can still be hungry. Yes. So at the end of a meal, Betty would say, oh no, that uni was so delicious. I want two more pieces. Right, right, right. And it's fine. I mean, you know, you don't have to like eat all of the same things. You can pick out your favorites. You can be independent, but you're You're sharing and enjoying it together. I don't know. Like, I have never had a meal with someone else where we're eating the exact same thing at the exact same time, right? And we finish at the exact same time and we're satisfied at the exact same time, right? It's just, and that's the expectation that we're bringing to partner sex. Like, they're magically going to know. Like, we're expecting them to be able to order for us off the menu, tell us what we want. Suppose they order liver pate, and we don't like liver pate. Are we supposed to choke it down and pretend to like it because that's what our partner ordered for us? And sometimes it's just our mood. Right. So just like we have moods about what we want to watch moods about what we want to eat. The same mm-hmm. thing is about sexuality. And there's plenty of times I could say, you know what? I'm just not into penetration tonight, right? but I'd love to share an orgasm with you. Or I'd really love to do X, Y, Z, but you know what? I ate a little bit too much, but you know, let's just stimulate ourselves together. Or let's just, you know, you can do that. You can state your pleasure and put a limit on it. And what that is, is setting the expectation so yes. that we don't build resentment. Yes. And think of sex acts as a buffet. It's not all about intercourse, right? It's not all about penetration. You know, that's something on the buffet. That's something on the menu. But there are just so many other pleasurable activities, including just good old fashioned necking and making out. That's probably my favorite. Necking out and hand jobs. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) That's pretty good. Um, And also, 
you know, not taking ourselves so seriously. Mm -hmm. We make sex so serious. And if I had a nickel for every time a partner or a lover in the past said, you're the best. And you know what? I know people with amazing sex skills. So Mm -hmm. I'm not the best, but I'm comfortable with my body. I know what I like. I can do myself or tell you how, and I have a good time. So what does that mean? You know, things happen. It's funny. There are sounds and smells and things slip off and roll off the bed. It's funny. Mm -hmm. You know, don't be so serious. Find the joy, find the humor, laugh at yourself, laugh with each other. Um, It's quite wonderful when we can just put down the pretense, just be ourselves and just be relaxed. Yes. And if you'd like to join us for a live body sex workshop, we're hosting a retreat at Menla in upstate New York this upcoming October 14th through 17th. The link is in the description in the bio and the URL is bodysex.com slash workshop hyphen retreat. We hope to see you in the circle. Mm-hmm.